Hey guys, this is gonna be the last video today. Um, YouTube kind of gets cranky if you put out more than one video a day, and I could have, if I'd have found this out earlier, I could have merged this with the Champions video. But as you know, this weekend we're having times two chance of getting a legendary from Sacred Shards for the Champion Chase tournament. But as what they like to do with certain champions is they like to put them up for grabs right away, especially these faction unity champions. So Legate Teox is on the times 10. There's no progressive chance to get this guy. It's times 10. I think player knows how good this guy is. So they're really limiting the chances of you getting him, but also increasing the chances of you getting him. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but I did some quick math. I asked around and so I'm just going to open this up and then kind of show you what we're working with here. Let me go to OBS display capture. Okay. So, um, yeah, this, I mean, the math just doesn't, is not making sense and I'm probably an idiot, but whatever. So we have 184 legendaries that are up for grabs that are not special editions, which means login champs like Xena and the, um, monster hunter champs. They're not included in this pool because you can't get them. And so you have times 10 chance to get one of those guys. So when I go 0.1 into 18, 184, you get 18.4 chance. And then I see, it just doesn't make sense to me. You roughly would have twice the chance of getting a champion from that, I guess. I don't know. Um, but the general consensus is anywhere from 7 to 9% chance to get the desired legendary that is up on a times 10, which is pretty shitty. I think that's archaic, and I think Plarium really needs to like do away with the times 10 because they've already implemented the progressive chances of 15 and 20 and 25. I think that just needs to be standard of get rid of the 2, 15, and 20 and just keep up a 25% chance to get the desired legendary. The champion pool is too big. It's 184 non void legendaries non-special edition legendaries and yeah that's just and, th and that's also including the faction unity champions because they're not in the pool either unless they're put in the pool for these events but legate teox is going to be up for grabs for this uh this event i'm going to be putting him in mine i do have uh 12 sacreds right now i don't buy sacreds so I get them with my monthly pack that I buy, the $30 one, like you get one. But uh, yeah, right now I also wouldn't be summoning, even though it is pretty amazing. You got Feral and you got this guy, but there's no reason to summon right now, so I'm not going to. I'm going to wait for Legate Teox because uh, my loser man faction uh, is is pretty stacked a -roo. We can just do this, actually. You can actually get rid of, they should just get rid of the old sort, and then this is just what they keep. But yeah, I... I have, I mean, all the good legendary lizards. So, yeah. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. But anyways, that's just my thing. Um, let's get into the notes for the patch and just kind of talk our way through it and see where we go from there. Let's go to news. Do I still have it pulled up? I do. So let's just pull it up and then we'll get rid of it. We'll do display capture here. Um, so Siege, okay. This is going to be a very long video that is going to be very monotonous. You're just going to hear me talk. It's kind of like a read-along thing. I'll kind of interject to be like, oh, this is what this is and kind of stuff. So let's just get into it. Uh, Siege, the basics. As always, we've uh, prepared a video guide to explain the Siege mode and how show its various mechanics in detail. The first part of the preview has already been uploaded to your YouTube channel or our YouTube channel. And the second half will be released soon, which it already was. Uh, nonetheless, we've also prepared a written recap for the highlights. Siege is a new game mode that pits two clans against each other in a brutal whirlwind of PvP warfare. You'll need to be part of a clan and reach level 45 or higher to become an eligible participant. Clan members below level 45 won't be able to join Siege battles even when their clan is engaged in one. To access it, go to the game modes menu and select the Siege tab once you've met the requirements. Okay. Uh, also, it is in-game but hidden. Uh, so again, on Thursdays, you usually release like big patch data um they already kind of did release patch data and that's why we have you know we have the all the new champions in the game now which i always like to by the way as quick side note i always like to go in and see if anybody got them yet you know i always like to click on and see if anybody got them but yeah this is a dmx copper coin uh, and then the new mythic from the demon spawn which is this guy communist dark smile yeah so he looks like john leguizamo from spawn in this form right here 
So, yeah, a lot of, you know, heard people calling him Fat Joker. The design's great. So, and then, yeah, as you saw, we had our lizard man here, Mr. T Ox. There you be. Okay, let's get back into it, shall we? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Each clan will receive its own fortress. Your base of operations in the world of raid is the name of the feature. Suggests clan VP, PvP will focus on repelling the opposing clan's forces from your fortress and besieging their own in turn. These fortresses are, in essence, a collection of various buildings interconnected by paths, each providing special bonuses to help the clan prevail in siege battles. Although the layout of all clan fortresses is identical and cannot be changed by any means, so it's just stacked what it is, it's you know factory settings. Uh, you can make upgrades that significantly impact gameplay. To do that, you'll need two resources unique to the siege mode, Florins and Mana Orbs. You'll earn both as rewards for actions and completed during siege battles, but everyone will receive an initial stockpile on July 11th, tomorrow, so they can start developing their fortress ahead of the very first battle. Keep in mind that Florins won't be transferred if you hop between clans. There you are. Uh, so if you plan to do that, it's best to hurry up and switch before the new feature goes live tomorrow, as of this video. Otherwise, you'll lose part of that initial gift. All buildings in Clan Fortress start at level 1, but Florence can be donated directly to each one in order to upgrade it. Upgrading a building increases the number of defense teams that can garrison it and unlock more powerful bonuses. The bigger your garrison, the better because a building that lost all its defense teams during the battle phase of the siege battle is considered to be destroyed. These buildings no longer provide any bonuses and need to be repaired by spending Florins before they are back at their full potential again. So what this is saying is, uh, your buildings start at level 1. You need to use Florins to upgrade the buildings and do special things with them. After the siege is done, you also need to spend Florins, right, to repair everything. Is this what I'm getting at? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. So you, your buildings get destroyed. You have to repair them. It's upkeep cost. So essentially what they're doing is they're turning this into like an RTS. I mean, really, um, you know, you have to keep these buildings up. You're going to have to repair them, you know, um, all that fun jazz. Fun jazz. I love that everybody, quick side note, like I love that everybody was like, hey, what's the biggest problem in raid? The time I spend in this fucking game. There are other things I wish to be doing not playing this game. I love playing this game. I like playing this game. I don't wish to devote my entire fucking day to it. And then they're like, hey, guess what? Siege mode. Hey, go fuck yourselves. I'll play more. If not, well, you're out of the loop. It is what it is. I mean, it's good that they bring out content, but they also need to reduce the time and other content. Like I brought this up before with siege coming out, they should make instant battles for every fucking dungeon. If you've completed that dungeon on auto, you should be able to instant battle that just like clan boss. That is the number one thing they need to do for raid. And it's nothing but a benefit to them. They think, oh, well, you don't spend enough time in raid. You're not going to spend money by looking at the shop and getting up the pop-up offers. Stop that. You're not getting anybody. There's already a study done on like free-to-play players. And the free-to-play players that don't, obviously, they don't spend any money. You will not get them to spend money. They are freeloading, which is good, but keeps, keeps the game active and keeps it developed, right? The people that are already spending, i.e. myself, are going to spend anyways because we're we, you know, essentially it's the falling blade, um, you know, analysis or whatever you want to call it, symbol, where it's like, you know, where you, I go to catch that blade to stop, it's going to hurt me anyways. So I'm just going to keep letting that thing fall and I've already made this investment. I'm probably using that analogy wrong. Sue me. All right. Um, but if you have it so people do instant battles, like do 10 at a time even, they use up their energy, they use up their gems, they use up all their in-game resources, and you might actually get a free-to-play player to be like, oh, I can spend a little, I spent $5, I can spend $10, I can spend $1 here. You know, you can do that. They just won't fucking do that because they think if they keep you in-game long enough, which is this fucking Ubisoft thing that they were coming up with too, you know, like, oh, so many hours in-game, they're more, more likely to buy. That's actually bullshit, that's a lie. You, you actually turn off, I just turned into a whole tangent, you actually turn off the player from wanting to do anything with your fucking game. Like right now, I, I love you guys. I do have a decent sized community right now. Shout out. We're over 550 and I'm very happy about that. And I've been more active lately, which is good. Um, and shout out to my brother Samson for making my new logo and intro. I love it. Thank you. Um, I like making videos for you guys, but I don't want to fucking do this all day. 
like today I woke up, I'm like, God damn it. I got, I still have to do the video on siege, which I still, I understand. I just don't want to do it. And then I have the videos for the new champions coming out. There's a times two times 10 out. There's all this other stuff. I would, I'm going to tell you right now, I would rather be playing shadow of the earth tree. I, I, I went to new game plus on accident on my first character. I've had to replay through that game and I'm trying to get, I just killed Mo and I'm trying to get to the shadow of the earth tree. So here we are, but sorry, a little tangent on the aside there. Just fucking move that out of the way. My thing too long. Didn't watch. Hear me, bitch. <sighs> they need to speed up the rest of the parts of the game. I mean, they've already nerfed the bosses, which is a great start, but you have to let us do instant battles. And also, you need to get rid of multi-battles that are, like, one use only. Uh, again, I'm going to call back to Summoner's War. Summoner's War has up to a 30-man battle that you can just set up. You walk away, you come back, you're 30, you're done. You can do another 30, and you can do it infinitely as long as you were playing the game. Raid needs to do that. I don't know why they failed to do this, because Summoner's War has been around longer. And if you look at the money, they're more successful. All right, tangent off. Let's talk about mana orbs. On the other hand, are needed to activate bonuses and conditions that can be kept in your personal pool or donated to the clan. You'll see why both are needed when we discuss buildings in detail. So there are things like, hey, all Ogren in this building get plus 10% damage or all Ogren rares in this building do, you know, they get 20 more speed. That's what mana orbs are for. And you can donate them to the clan to let the leadership of the clan, which is going to be clan leader, deputies, and lieutenants, which I think that names are kind of swapped there i feel like a lieutenant's higher than a deputy but whatever um they will be allowed to uh do what they wish with the mana orbs strategically which right now my clan that i'm a part of i used to be the clan leader but choco puma is and he's doing a hell of a job i love that fucking guy um i'm just a deputy in it uh we are strategically doing everything right now we have a spreadsheet going and we're having everybody in the clan put up your defense teams that you can put up that you would do for regular classic arena into the spreadsheet so we can figure out where to put everybody makes sense um so it's again now we have this spreadsheet and now we're doing all this fucking stuff Ugh, man it's just like classic clans man uh buildings there are four types of buildings in the clan fortune there are also pots that stand separately uh posts sorry not pots all buildings can be upgraded to level three and most buildings generate bonuses some of which affect other buildings and posts Stronghold. The stronghold is your single most important structure. Any clan fortress that houses between 12 and 18 defense teams, depending on the level, and provides a layer bonus, which affects every other building and post. Do not con uh, do not be confused by the name. We already have plans to expand the clan fortress by unlocking additional layers with more buildings and additional strongholds at some point in the future. But what uh when that happens the bonus in question will only affect that particular layer for now however there is only one stronghold per clan fortress oh sorry a little bit of acid reflux there you can only upgrade all other buildings to the same level as your stronghold so focus on maxing it out first neglecting it will severely undermine your clan's overall defense so this is you know it's just like a tower defense game where it's like all right you're gonna your main building your hub your great hall you know that needs to go up first in level before you can start building up other levels to other posts and buildings, right? And then also you to build additional buildings is what that's saying. Uh, you can only upgrade all buildings the same level as strong. Okay, we did that. Capturing the opposing clan stronghold is one of the main objectives in Siege. And if yours remains unconquered, everyone in the clan will receive an additional reward at the end of the battle phase. Mana Shrines. There are two mana shrines in the fortress. They provide no bonuses of their own and house six to nine defense teams in the garrison, but defending them earns the clan some extra mana orbs. Attackers can rebattle enemy teams within destroyed mana shrines to earn additional orbs as well. Each player can fight each of the defeated team defense teams one more time. So if you watch the video, you get attack scrolls, defense scrolls, I think it was, and then it was rebattle scrolls. So doing rebattles is just going to net you more rewards, right? Um they're doing these mana shrine things because it's a resource defense okay so you have to protect your resource if that if you're cut off from the river you, you're not going to get any supplies if you're cut off from the road you're not going to get any supplies that makes sense we're, we're uh, it's siege right medieval siege magic towers magic towers can hold up to four defense teams and generate a special bonus that applies both to the tower itself and all their buildings or posts directly connected to the magic tower via paths 
Only the clan leader or their deputies can activate the magic tower bonus, and they must choose a unique bonus for each tower. Using the same one over and over won't work. That makes sense. So um, from what I saw people talking about, the path, if you look at the video, is going to be laid out just like Centranos, okay? So say we got a little tower here, but you got your magic building here, connected, connected, connected. So only these three will be affected by the bonus produced by this building. Does that make sense? Okay. Pa, 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 pa. Defense towers. Defense towers work in similar fashion. Hold up to four defense teams, but the bonus they generate only affects the champions fighting for that tower. On the other hand, they can both strengthen your champions and weaken the attackers in some way. Only the clan leader and clan deputies can activate this bonus. And once again, you must pick a unique bonus for each tower. So what? So essentially what they're saying for these two towers is you can't have, all right, all defense champions in this get plus 20 defense. You can't choose that same bonus for the other defense tower. It won't allow you. You have to use a different one. So like all magic champion, magic affinity champions in this tower get plus 20 attack, right? Essentially is what they're saying. Um, posts. Posts are a unique type of location. The clan fortress, unlike buildings, posts cannot be upgraded or destroyed. Think of them as an important tactical location where a band of champions can make their stand appropriately. Only one defense team can be assigned to a defend post to defend a post. Uh, conditions are another thing that further separate posts and buildings. At the beginning of every siege, each post will receive three random conditions from fortress ride pool the higher stronghold level the more conditions you have any player who assigns or champions to a post can spend mana orbs to activate one of these conditions so it's a big fuck you to attackers good uh, it's important to remember that conditions affect both the defender and the attacker at the same time for example they may limit both players to using champions of a specific affinity or rarity, disable revives, or make all champions immune to turn meter manipulation. Think carefully about the condition you choose and make sure it benefits your champions and put your potential opponents in a bind. Phases. All right, wonderful. So we covered all the buildings, okay? So we have our stronghold. We have the mana shrines, magic towers, defense towers, and posts. We've covered that. We understand it. Let's move to phases. Each siege is divided into four phases. You have your prep phase, your matchmaking, your battle, and your result calculation. The prep phase. This prep phase will last 12 days after the previous siege ends. The clan can repair and upgrade buildings, assign defense teams to garrison them, and activate the bonuses and conditions for the upcoming battle. You'll also be able to pick up any uncollected rewards and review battle reports to see how your clan fared in the last siege. During the prep phase, you cannot see any other clan fortresses or declare any attacks. Here we go. So we're going to have 12 days, I assume, starting tomorrow, because they're going live tomorrow for us. And then 12 days after that, we're fighting, right? Um, matchmaking phase. Matchmaking phase begins immediately after the prep phase and lasts a day. If you meet all the necessary requirements to participate in Siege, your clan will be matched against an opposing clan of a similar strength. But if your clan hasn't set at least 15 defense teams within the clan fortress during the prep phase, you won't join the matchmaking pool. This way, inactive clans will be excluded and newer clans won't throw, won't be thrown into a fight they can't win yet. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. That's like being a little kid on the playground and you're fucking wham, you know, just punch them. Uh, whatever. <laughs> CVC performance, clan league position, and a few other factors will determine every clan's first match, but siege victory points will determine matchmaking in all subsequent battles. Makes sense. Uh, the battle phase. Once matchmaking is over, the battle phase begins. Your opponent's clan fortress will be revealed and only get two days to conquer it while simultaneously defending your own from counterattacks. No buildings can be repaired during this phase, nor can you reassign champions or bonuses. Be sure to set everything up during the prep phase or suffer the consequences of bad planning. Result calculation phase. The final phase is focused on calculating the results of the current siege battle and last three hours. You won't be able to do anything in the meantime. No more attacks, repairs, etc. Once the calculations are finished, both clans will be uh, presented with final scoreboards and various siege rewards will be unlocked. Now, kind of funny about what's going to happen with this. And I'm predicting it now and we've been predicting it ever since. Every time a new clan activity has come out, clans thin out. The weaker chaff get pushed out of the clan so they can get new uh, members in that are going to be higher and participate in everything in the clan to make it the best clan. So that's happened with Hydra, with Hydra Clash. That happened like instantly. People were leaving because nobody wanted to do Hydra. Still, nobody still wants to do Hydra. Um, and it's going to be the same thing for Siege. So it's going to come down to, you know, it happened with CVC first, then Hydra Clash, and now it's going to happen with Siege. 
So we're just getting this Reaganomics effect where everybody's trickling down out of the high clans to go to lower clans with lower requirements because they don't want to put that much time in the game. They like the game, it's pretty, but they don't want to do that much in the game. All right, 20 minutes already. Let's go, boys. Uh, Siege Mechanics. There's another important resource in Siege Val besides Florins and Man Orbs. Scrolls. Three types of scrolls exist, each with its own purpose. You have your defense scrolls. Um, allow you to assign champions to garrison a building or post. Once defense teams will cost one scroll, but you can reassign the team later during the prep phase without losing a scroll. That's nice. Should you change your mind, each clan gets enough defense scrolls for 30 clan members to fill all the open slots in their fortress. Clans with fewer than 30 members will be at a disadvantage, so set up recruitment before Siege goes live. You can't assign the same champion to two separate defense teams unless you have a duplicate, but you can use a defending champion in offensive battles in the enemy fortress at the same time. Thank fucking God. Could you imagine that logistical nightmare? You just nothing would just ha nothing would happen. We'd be fighting with uncommons. You know. Um, so yeah, it's the it's the same rule as Hydra. You can't use the same champion in each difficulty of Hydra unless it's a duplicate. Okay. Um, larger buildings will have their garrison divided into several groups. For example, at level 3, Stronghold is composed of six groups, with each group containing three defensive teams. An attacker will have to defeat the first team in each group before they can challenge the others. And since only the player who assigned their champions to a specific position can reassign them, not even the clan leader can do that. Okay, a little bit of freedom. It would be prudent to talk strategy with your clanmates instead of just dropping your fighters into the first slot you see. You can also assign champions to a reserve team should any building slots be left empty at the end of the prep phase. The game will try to fill them by randomly choosing reserve teams from the clan shared pool. Oh, thank God we're almost over. <laughs> Presets are the last thing to, be, uh, to remember about defense. The game will remember your champion combos between seizures, so you won't have to set them up manually every time if you don't want to. Alternatively, you can pick one of your saved teams meant for the arena to fill a slot. Again, this is why I like Summoner's War a bit better. Because you have decks, which are set teams, and you can just pick from there and be like, there it is, there it is, there it is, right? And then you're done. But this says it automatically remembers what combo you've started with. So, uh, Attack shows are required to initiate battles against opposing clan garrisons. This is exact, their exact number can differ from one stage to another, but all clan members will get one guaranteed attack scroll. And then an additional number will be divided among the entire clan, depending on how many eligible players there are and how many garrison slots exist in their opponent's fortress. Uh, you won't be able to attack whatever building you want. However, a limited number of locations will be open to assault at the beginning of each stage, and only once the attacker sees those posts and buildings can they proceed further into the enemy fortress. To do that, you need to defeat all defense teams within buildings that have been captured in this manner are considered to be destroyed, and any bonuses they provide will be nullified. But if even one defense team remains undefeated, the building won't be captured and won't provide any victory medals for the attackers. So it's prudent that you scope, you essentially scope out these defense towers and the uh, magic towers because they're providing bonuses, right? Especially the magic tower. So the magic tower is like, hey, this hopefully isn't a real thing, but it's like everybody that's in these uh, connected buildings, you all have polymorph five star, right? On top of everything. You're like, whoa, whoa that's fucking crazy. That that building has to go. So you take your guys and you you strategically target that building and you systematically uh, deconstruct it, take it down, shut off that passive, and then you move past. Does that make sense? So that's what you want to do. Uh, once the battle has been initiated, no one else can join. The defense team engagement will be grayed out for the duration of the fight. Only if the attacking player loses... Uh, Player loses can one of their clanmates attack the same team. Empty slots are captured without a fight, albeit you still need to spend an attack roll to claim them. Oh, bummer. Hmm. Also, keep in mind that each champion can only participate in two offensive battles per siege. Don't waste your best on something a weaker team can take out. So this is another thing. You also can't use the same champion, but you also can't make them go uh, more than two times in a fight. All right. Rematch scrolls will be useful if you lose a battle and want to try again. You can swap your champions around to, if need be, so don't be afraid to try new tactics. Every player gets a, as many rematch scrolls as they have battle scrolls. Cool. Uh, objectives. There are two main objectives in the clan. Must be completed to win a siege battle, capture the opponent's stronghold, and earn more victory medals overall. To achieve the former, your clan must defeat all defense teams hold up in the stronghold. Victory medals are earned by either capturing the opponent's buildings or posts or successfully defending your own. It's important to remember that the number of victory medals 
doesn't depend on the building level, so it may be smarter sometimes to capture an empty low-level defense tower than to besiege a heavily defended shrine and waste precious attack rolls on a pitched battle with no guaranteed result. If neither clan manages to achieve both of these goals, there will be no winner in the siege and both clans go home with limited rewards. Let's talk about rewards. So the big bugaboo in the rewards is going to be on that new Void Legendary. Guess what? You can only get rewards, uh, you can only get her fragments if you win the siege battle. And it's dependent on the level of your of your fortress, right? So level one, you win, you get one. We already saw that in the video. And they already clarified that with her new spotlight um, trailer. So siege battle features a number of different rewards, both individual and those meant for the entire clan. Keep in mind that you need to have one, at least one offensive or defensive battle. Otherwise, you won't be eligible to claim any other of these rewards. Winning offensive battles and maintaining undefeated defense teams at the end of the siege will yield some florins, and you can fight in the previously destroyed mana shrines of the enemy fortress to earn mana orbs. Furthermore, capturing those shrines, capturing the enemy stronghold, or defending your own will provide a reward of mana orbs for your whole clan. Milestone rewards become available for the entire clan once you've earned enough victory miles to unlock them. Should your clan prevail and achieve both victory conditions, you can expect to enjoy the awesome Siege Victory Chest. It contains all sorts of goodies, including champion fragments for Athoriatrix Lamasu, a powerful legendary support champion that simply you don't want to miss. Whoa. And they did release the video on her. Uh, finally, Victorious Clans will earn Siege Trophies to be displayed beside your CVC Trophies as a mark of excellence. Siege leaderboards featuring a number of victories and resources donated to the clan's cause will be available as well all right that's the video thanks guys holy shit 26 minutes um yeah so to break it down uh people are probably going to be wanting to go to different clans once this uh before the start so today on the 10th you might just want to get the fuck out of dodge uh and go to a different clan that's probably not going to be pushing siege if that's something you don't want to do in the game because it is going to eat up a significant amount of time um, so hopefully raid implements some changes. Like I said, maybe we can get some instant battles since they've done it with clan boss. We know they can do it. So come on raid, do the right thing. Here we go. All right. But anyways, yeah. Um, the other thing, remember that we talked about starting. So Friday and Saturday, you will have a 10 times chance to get this really fucking powerful guy. And, um, I'm, I'm going to open mine for him. Why not? Because they haven't done a guaranteed one yet, and I don't know if they will be uh, for a while. So keep that in mind. Keep your heads up. Uh, also, right now, we have the Dungeon Divers event. I would wait until tomorrow to finish this, because tomorrow is when we get the Dragon Tournament for this Fragment Fusion. Artifact Enhancement event is going on right now. I'll be done with it as soon as I'm done talking on this video. Um, hopefully you got your Spider Tournament done and got your little Crystal Lose. And then, yeah, Dragon Tournament starts tomorrow. And then, but we also have champion training going on right now. Me personally, I recommend going up to 7.850 points to get the Immortal. Uh, so there we are. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Catch you in the next one.